ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by Mr. Mark Lazary and Mr. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> it's an honor. It's an honor to host uh, the 2021 NBA championship, the champions, the Milwaukee Bucks. I uh, congratulations to the team owners, Mark and Wes and Jamie and Mike, and the two dear, dear friends, Ted and Mary Kellner. You won't believe it, but they're both responsible for my being here. Not a joke. 19, I'm, I excuse the point of personal privilege we used to say in the Senate. In 1972, I was a 29-year-old kid and decided I was going to run for the United States Senate. I wasn't old enough. You had to be 30 to be a senator, for real. When I got elected, I had to wait 17 days to be eligible. And, uh, and uh, right at the very end, my sister managed my campaign, and my brother raised the money. He was 25. My sister was, she used to be three years younger. She's now 20 years younger. But at any rate, <laughs> and we were doing well. We we're catching up. No one expected us to have any shot at all. And uh, we, everything was moving. We were actually catching up after being down 56 to 28 at one point. And uh, we run out of money. And all of a sudden, I got a phone call on a Tuesday saying that we don't have any money to keep any of our ads on TV or the radio. And so I didn't know what to do. And I got a call from a guy named Ted Kellner and uh, four other people. And they said, come on out to Greenville. We want to help you out. They helped me out. They financed the end of my campaign. They were my friends before, and I'm indebted to them now. Well, thank you both, Ted and Mary. Thank you. <laughs> now that I've ruined your reputation. <laughs> and while, uh, while he couldn't be here today, I also want to congratulate the team's previous owner and dear friend of mine, a servant of the United States Senate, Herb Cole, one of the finest guys I serve with, a man of significant honor. And folks, congratulations to the staff and to the fans and to everyone here to celebrate, including uh, uh, the second gentleman. Doug, where are you, Doug? There's a man who's a basketball fan. He's a second gentleman. He's a first-rate lawyer, and now he's a second gentleman. And I don't know where he has more power. Uh, most of all, congratulations to all the players. Now, I, I know uh, you've got final, you, you know, you got in the finals uh, a, uh, the MVP player here, and, and I'd like to talk about it for just a minute. You know, we, uh, we also got uh, someone who earned the award that, uh, that's uh, just as important in my book, Dante. I'm honored to, uh, to be with him tonight, uh, today, because in 2015, he was the Delaware High School Boys Basketball Player of the Year. Dante grew up in Newark, Delaware, attended a high school. I still like him anyway. There's two competing high schools, Catholic high schools in Delaware, Archmere and Slazianum. Slazianum had five times as many boys, and they beat us all the time. But I still, I still have the second highest score of football. But anyway, you know, I, I don't know, man. Dante, I still like you in spite of that fact. And uh, so, uh, and he won two state championships there. So he's used to this championship. And then he started at Villanova. And the Bidens are a sporting family, particularly my wife, Jill, who's, as she calls herself, a Philly girl. She takes it up a notch. She knows a lot about the sport, and she never forgives anybody if they lose. Uh, but, you know, we went to the University of Delaware, J Jill and I, years apart. And then she went on to Villanova grad school, and I went to Syracuse Law School. In 2016, we went to the Final Four to watch our teams play. And I watched... Uh, I watched Dante win his first of his two national titles at Nova. Dante, we're also proud of you back home, but I still like Syracuse. Um, <laughs> and to, to all the players, uh, uh, that's what you re represent for so many people. Pride. Pride and decency. 
Just look at the enduring images during the finals. Thousands of fans celebrating in the Deer District of, and the, uh, the Herb Cole Way. You know, you represented yourselves and your families, your organizations, and a great American city by staying true to who you are. You did the work in the off-season and during the grueling regular season. And the playoffs, down 0-2 against Brooklyn, and then to make it just to keep your the owners and, and your coach and, and <laughs> constant perspiring, uh, you, uh, on the finals, you're down 0-2 against Phoenix. But you never gave up. I watched. It was amazing how you came back. You always believed. And Coach Bud, you got them to play as a team. You know, Giannis... Uh, 50 points. 50 points. <laughs> to seal game six, to win the Bucks' first championship in 50 years since Kareem Al Al Abdul Jabbar and uh, Oscar Robinson uh, won it for the Bucks. And the worst part is, I remember them both. <laughs> <laughs> I was a kid. I was a kid. <laughs> I remember them both. Final MVP, two-time NBA MVP, five-time All-Star, and just named one of the, to the list of the 75 greatest NBA players ever. I might add that I'm proud that two Syracuse guys made it, uh, uh, Carmelo Anthony, as well as Dave Bing. I actually was at graduate school when they were playing and who played around this time, uh, the time I was there. And it, it, it just... Uh, and, and at just 26 years old, you've, you're just getting started. What makes it even more special is you won the title with your brother, who is here today, and you joined another brother already with a ring. What a hell of a family, I tell you what, man. <laughs> I think you won the gene pool. Uh, and you still got two more, right? And sons living the dream of an immigrant family from Nigeria, and then Greece in search of new opportunity. In struggles, they always dreamed. Brothers who once had to share the same basketball shoes, all five of them, and before they got to the NBA. I tell you what, I, I would have liked to have been there when you, that fight went on, who got the shoes when. But uh, <laughs> at any rate, I know, uh, I, I know your mom uh, uh, is so proud of you and is watching, and, and your dad's watching, look, looking down, watching over you all and your baby boys who will grow up knowing that anything is possible. And that's the power of a team's example, and not just winning the title. <laughs> Last year as a team, you took a stand for justice and peace in the wake of Jacob Blake's shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And you've gotten, and you've gotten people engaged. Now, it really mattered. I remember calling your coach. You've gotten people engaged. In, 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 in the vote, in the political process. You've encouraged fans to get vaccinated. You know, you, uh, I just want to thank you. I want to thank Drew Holiday and his wife, Lauren, who, uh, by the way, is probably a better athlete. Uh, <laughs> you're good. You're good. But I tell you what, um, you, you married way up, pal. Uh, Jill and I watched her. I, seriously, we watched her uh, bring home the Women's World Cup uh, in, in, in place in 2015 to add to her two other Olympic gold medals. I mean, what the hell, you know? <laughs> and they're world-class athletes, and they, they, they talked about why getting vaccinated is so important and uh, to uh, protect yourself and those you love and people around you, and it matters. So I want to thank you both. And, uh, and I'll conclude with this. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the NBA. During that time, We've seen uh, uh, generations of players define their eras with their styles and the play and their personalities. And we've seen a distinctly American game become the fastest growing sport in the world. The fastest growing sport in the world. When I first went to Beijing to meet with Xi Jinping, he put me on a basketball court. I'm not like these guys, I can play a little bit, but put me on a basketball court. And I'm thinking to myself, Everywhere in the world I go, as I travel the world, basketball. And the best players want to come to America, though, in search of possibilities. And through it all, one thing re remains constant. The values of the game and of the sport. Teamwork, hard work, respect, and the belief 
and we can strengthen the bonds that bring us together and stand up for something bigger than ourselves. The first time NBA championship team visited the White House was in 1963, when President Kennedy hosted the Boston Celtics. A few months later, in August, Bill Russell returned to Washington, this time to stand on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial to hear Dr. King and his, his speech on, I have a dream from the whole nation. Today, I'm honored to welcome the Milwaukee Bucks to continue that tradition of sport and that, in sport and in democracy, unity perhaps is the most elusive thing and the most necessary thing. But that's who this team is. They're unified. That's who we are as a nation. As we saw over the weekend, with the getting closer to passing the consequential investments in our nation and our people, there's nothing stopping us when we work together, nothing. And uh, that uh, as one team, as one nation, there's not a thing we've ever failed to do. Never, ever, ever when the American people have given half a chance that we're let their country down. And just like you, you've worked together and watching you has just been incredible. So congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks. The best of luck for the rest of this season. <laughs> Actually, this is a season just beginning for us here. But all kidding aside, best of luck next year, but you all are the best. You're the best, and it's a great honor to have you here. Now, I think I'm supposed to introduce somebody, but I'm not sure who am I supposed to introduce now. Uh, I'm joking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I get you guys confused, you know? Anyway, come on. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I also want to thank the Vice President, who we were able to meet earlier today with our family. I want to, I never know, do I say thank you, Doug? Do I say thank you, Second Gentleman? But either way, um, it's been a real pleasure, and I want to thank you for being here. Um, we want to thank everybody here. It's been a real honor for us, I mean, obviously, as a team, and for everything that we stand for and everything that we've done. Um, but. You know, it's actually really cool to win a championship. Um, you get to come to the White House. And, you know, I think for us, the one thing we'd like is hopefully we'll come back here next year, sir, and we'll do it again. Um, you know, what the hell? Why don't we come back for the next four years? Um, we'll just keep coming back. You know what? Let's do it for eight years, and then we'll do it here. I think that's a good idea. It is, isn't it? So, um, well, we want to say thank you. I want to introduce Giannis, who really needs no introduction. As the president said, um, we led our team to the championship. So without further ado, Giannis. Woo! Uh, this, uh, this is awesome. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mark. Um, on behalf of my teammates, the coach staff, the Bucks organization, we are very uh, grateful for this opportunity. Um, you know, a kid from... Um, Sepolia, Athens, Greece, grew up from um, two Nigerian parents that they were struggling every day to uh, provide for us, illegal in uh, a country that didn't, they didn't call home at the time. It's an unbelievable opportunity to be able to be in the White House, uh, meeting uh, the President of the United States. I could not be uh, as honored and happy that uh, something like this have, have come something like this in my life. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our families. Obviously, our families are a big part of uh, who we are and what we do, and they did a lot of sacrifices during the year for us, enabled for us to win a championship. Uh, they're not here with us today, but uh, we always carry them in our heart, and uh, I want to thank our families. They're a big part of what we do. Um, um, also, um, Thanks to the box fans. Uh, we have the best fans in the world. Uh, they support us from day one. They support us when we, were, we won. We were the worst team in the NBA. And eight years later, we were the best team in the NBA. Um, and they've supported us all the way along. And uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't do it without them. Uh, and also, um, you know, for everybody out there, uh, this is a great example that, you know, with hard work, uh, with sacrifices, if you dedicate yourself and waking up every single day and try to um, get better in anything you do, in anything you love, and believing in your dreams, 
you can accomplish great things in life. And uh, man, as I said, uh, I've done that my whole life. And, and uh, I'm in the White House, and this is this is us. Awesome. Um, can never take moments like that for granted, but without hard work, that would not be possible. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you all sitting out there in the sun, and uh, all everybody out in that audience has been a great supporter of this outfit. And uh, it's been a great honor, a great pleasure to get to meet some of the players, get to know them a little bit. And uh, so I'll be not disappointed if I'm welcoming you back here next year, except that if the Sixers hear about that, I'm going to not be allowed in Philadelphia again. But, uh, <laughs> but all kidding aside, thank you all for being here. And let me ask the staff, what are we supposed to do now? <laughs> we doing a photograph? We're giving you the jersey. Give me a jersey. Oh, okay. all right. Okay, man. Well, thank you. All right. If you guys aren't here, come on, man. If you guys aren't here, they're going to think I stole the jersey. There you go. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Now, are we doing a picture up here?